this practice is so it's so simple. You either recognize open intelligence or you elaborate on your thoughts, emotions and sensations and opinions. Um, now your your opinions and intellectual assumptions, they're not yours. You've learned them from someone else or a book. Um, is there something about you that is yours that doesn't require any person to give you an idea about it or a book? You know, directly, is there something about you that just requires no affirmation, arguing? Yes, there is. <laughs> uh, in the training we call it open intelligence. You may well have another word for it, but your capacity to experience, you could call it m me, you know, can you identify me in your experience? You can do that now, I, can you find I in your experience? Now, we don't, we, d we very rarely say that because you've probably read lots of things about what I means and where to find it and how to, you know, enhance it and all of these things. Um, so our instruction in this training to stop thinking, to identify what we call open intelligence in your experience is very profound. Stop thinking, stop describing and what do you notice in your experience? Now you could call that I or me. Um, and the reason we don't use terms like that is because it, it's just open to debate and discussion and it has been that way for at least 6,000 years, modern, modern history and all the philosophers. Um, and really that inability of humanity to come to an adequate intellectual understanding of the nature of reality Basically, it doesn't mean that the philosophers are wrong, it just means that our intellect is incapable of, of uh, understanding the nature of reality. It, it, it's just so clear, you know, millennia of, of the most intelligent people who've ever walked the planet, devoting their entire lives to the intellectual examination of the nature of reality. We would have found it by now. No, and yet, you, well, prior to this training, I, was, I, I somehow thought that I would be able to understand the nature of reality. I mean, how arrogant is that? Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, if they can't figure it out after devoting an in, their entire lives to these problems, is Adrian going to be able to sort it out? <laughs> is Adrian more intelligent than all of the great philosophers and scientists throughout history? It's like, it's just not going to happen. You, you will not figure out why you are here, why you, you know, why you have certain thoughts, why the world is this, this, you know, why it's like this, why it's not like that. Oh, even talking like that is exhausting. <laughs> I mean, I'm particularly hot and sweaty today. And I think I might have some little friends living in my intestines as well. You know, and so the immediate benefit of open intelligence is I could get into feeling a little bit dizzy and sweaty and stomach cramps and intestinal sensations. Or I can use any of this to bring my, my focus back to the recognition of open intelligence. So that's the benefit of parasites, it's the benefit of being sweaty and hot. And this is what you'll start to recognize is that everything you experience in your life provides you with this beautiful opportunity to relax and acknowledge open intelligence. I just burped then. I thought it was going to be picked up by the mic. But I managed to disguise it. <laughs> and 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 for me, this is testament to the training. Is that it was always the case in my experience that the 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 more difficult circumstances were, the more obvious open intelligence was. Um, and it didn't mean that I suddenly magically had the ability to speak 
you know, come up with words that would sort out a difficult situation or um, know what to do in, in a particular situation. But what I found was just me recognizing open intelligence was way, way more beneficial than me and my intellect trying to get in there and sort it out based on my opinions, which I must say are always right. <laughs> that was a joke. Um, no, I, I really believe that I, I conventionally was and am quite intelligent and reasonable, very good at arguing and all of these things, but I, I can't tell you how practical this training is. I, if I rely on open intelligence and say nothing, that is always a very good option for me. If I try to get in, involved in a certain situation and circumstance using my intellect, then you know sometimes it, it, the, the solution or the outcome is is favourable, but more often than not, there's there's quite a bit of pushback, and and it doesn't you know nobody ever says. And I shared this the other day. You know, Adrian, wow, your your ideas are brilliant. They are the best. Why didn't we, why don't we listen to you all the time? Yeah, let's do it that way. That doesn't very rarely happen. There's, you know, somebody wants to do it another way or they have a different, you know, idea. And before you know it, there's a lot of discussion that needs to take place before begrudgingly everyone does a pretty poor job. <laughs> That's, that was my experience. Now, in this training, we rely on open intelligence. It doesn't matter what my opinions are. They fuel, they fuel me to recognise open intelligence. And um, if you're lucky enough... Um, or if you're interested to be around the centre, um, being in trainings, what you'll see, this whole place is run by volunteers and has been for the last, how, six years here, is that right? Seven years here, and before that we were in the Magic Park. Um, so we've been here since 2006, and everything you see here is, is, has been created by volunteers and contributions from volunteers. And, and the contributions come from just open-hearted gratitude based on the results that, you, that they experience from the training. Now, my, the results I experienced, I, fa I found what I was looking for. I, spent, I, I, I was nearly 40 when I came to the training and I'd spent my entire life trying to find well-being by not experiencing depression, anxiety and panic attacks, by... Um, making my physical body look a certain way with intimate partners with money um, many many strategies to try and make my experience look a certain way and sometimes i was successful and sometimes i wasn't but the great frustration for me was that whether i was successful or not at achieving all of these um, goals i still felt like exactly the same basically quite empty bored um, that life was essentially meaningless and it's not to say I didn't have some wonderful times and enjoyed lots of things because I did but it, it, it was it was quite something to n never find any any kind of sense of belonging or well-being it was it was it was you know quite scary and um, it was only until I came to this training where very um, immediately you're introduced to something that is completely reliable is always present and like i said at the beginning it doesn't require any arguing you know that you are and and have open intelligence at your disposal now since that simple introduction you can just do it again just stop thinking stop describing it's 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 just remarkable and what's what's remarkable too is that your life and your thoughts and your emotions, they're the things that will remind you to recognize open intelligence. So right there, you've been introduced to a practice where you don't need to change yourself. I mean, that was amazing. I could finally relax. I have a simple, simple <coughs> instruction. Um, and just to emphasize that the instruction to stop thinking is just to identify open intelligence. You can't stop thinking. And the, the, the instruction in the training is to recognize that open intelligence, which you already have, and repeat that recognition for short moments. 
It's not to hold open intelligence in place. You just recognize it and then it vanishes back into complete purity. And from that purity, a thought will arise, a sensation will arise. And the big joke is, and I, I, I did practice this, try, trying to empty my mind of thinking, is that thoughts are completely empty. The emptiness you're looking for is the thoughts. Bingo. That's a game that our old ladies play in England, isn't it? Bingo. You probably have it all over the world. It's quite popular, isn't it? Bingo. You stand up and shout bingo when you get all the numbers and then you, you win a teddy bear. And basically, every short moment, you can stand up and go bingo because you've won a teddy bear. It's, well, it's a bit better than winning a teddy bear. Everything is the diamond shine of open intelligence. The things that you've been trying to um, get rid of, modify, that's, that, that's where the treasure is. And this training will show you that. So the next time you're angry, desirous, sick, um, depressed, you can immediately implement this. If you're new, you can, you can implement the stopping thinking and stopping describing instruction to identify open intelligence. It's open, it's relaxed, it's spacious. Um, but then you'll see that the, well, maybe the depression comes back, but the, the presence of open intelligence is still there. It's not dependent on you, you know, not being depressed. So this is another recognition you'll have. In the beginning, it will seem like you'll have your thoughts, feelings, sensations. So in, in the balance view training, we call these things data. So you'll have your data and your data will remind you to recognize open intelligence. So it will seem like there are two things. But the more you, you practice, um, and if, if you would like to, um, the balance view training isn't just that instruction. It's a, it's a complete package of simple support that's very easy to integrate into normal everyday life. And that's another thing that's so special about this training. It's about you and your everyday life. And it's completely, um, you can implement it in your everyday life, which was, again was something that was very different to the other tr practices that I've been involved in, um, that I'm very grateful for. But it was, there was a very clear delineation between my practice time, you know, the meditation cushion and the quietness and everyday life, there was no, they were, they, were t they were completely different things. And that's not to say that I didn't get, derive some benefit in everyday life from uh, my practices, but it was very clear that I was, when I was practicing, I was more relaxed, and when I was in everyday life, I was less relaxed. So this practice, the Four Mainstays Lifestyle, we call it, four simple supports, supports um, that will, will show you that basically your life is the practice ground. Your life is the practice ground. I'm the parrot of, of open intelligence. And the more you avail yourself of the support, the more obvious this will, will become in your experience that you are perfect as you are. Your thoughts, emotions and sensations are perfect as they are. Because they are open intelligence. They are inseparable from open intelligence like the sky and the color blue. <laughs> Everything is evidence of open intelligence. So even the most subtle thoughts about open intelligence and your practice, the solution is not to think about these or try and figure them out. It's just to leave them and let them be as they are and bring, bring the attention back in a, in a completely relaxed way and just acknowledge the presence of open intelligence. And practically speaking, what happens is you just become more, more relaxed, you have more energy, more, more capacity to be in life in an empowering way, much less affected by what people say to you, you know, your thoughts, emotions and sensations. I, I was completely ruled by um, what other people thought about me, how people looked at me. If somebody looked at me in the wrong way on the bus to work, then that would be it. I'd be angry all day. I'd be thinking about other times that people looked at me in a funny way and 
you know, maybe there's something wrong with me and I should have said this and, and you know, and then all my relating at work would be from this space of anger. Um, and now, it's just, it's just a, an incredible thing to recognize that everything is me. Everything, everything I think, everything I experience is inseparable from my fundamental nature, open intelligence. So if we do that, stop thinking again, stop describing, identify open intelligence, that is who you are. Your, your physical fleshy body is inseparable from that expanse. You know, this isn't spiritual mysticism, that's scientific fact. We are nothing but space. And so if, if physical objects are empty of anything other than, they, they don't really know how to describe it, but light, maybe waves, um, and you don't really need to understand this, but everything is so, so less solid than we think. What does that say about our thoughts and emotions? What are they made of? Now, the next time you walk down the beach, it, this doesn't happen to me anymore, but I just remember you know, thinking, oh, what do people think of me? What do I look like? I'm not thin enough, you know, if I have my top off. Everyone's looking at me. Everyone's thinking about me. I don't look right. I should be like that tan 20-year-old man over there. That's who I want to be like. Then I wouldn't have these thoughts. Oh, God, I hate myself. I need to stop eating pizza at Fellini's. <laughs> Especially the pepperoni with extra blue cheese. <laughs> Um, you know, that's why I'm so miserable, that's why everyone's looking at me, no, no, no. all the way up the beach with the sun, you know, not noticing the sun, not noticing, the, you know, the beautiful wildlife, the sea, how magical everything is, just miserable, fat Adrian walking up the beach, just completely obsessed with imagine, imaginary problems. Nobody's thinking about you, no one. Maybe your mother and your father think about you. <laughs> Probably quite a lot. My special little soldier. Um, and if you have children, you probably think about your children all the time, I'm sure. But nobody else is thinking about you. And you know why they're not thinking about you. Because they're all completely obsessed by what other people think about them. It's insanity. It's complete, total, utter insanity. We live in a, in a complete fabricated world of misery, completely made up. And unless you have the, the, the golden shining light of open intelligence as your fundamental basis, then at best the world is a circus for you and everyone in it. You know, circuses with the cars, with the doors that fall off and the trousers fall down and, you know, that's amusing. That's at best. And we all see at, at worst what happens when everyone is so obsessed with their own negativity and suffering that the only way to, to get relief from that, you know, we don't, we don't really need to go very far to see what, what, what lengths people go to to try and relieve their own suffering. It's quite horrific. Um, and so, you know, the invitation in this training is for you to test it in your own experience. 